Well, you know, I've had the opportunity to interview a lot of people over the years, powerful politicians, business leaders, small town heroes. This latest interview, however, was a first, one I really didn't look forward to, not because of the person, she's been a dear friend and colleague for many years, but because of the topic. As you've heard, my co-anchor Vicki Yates is moving into a new chapter of her life in just a few short weeks, retirement. So tonight and Wednesday, she's the interviewee. Take a look. An acapella group at Belmont was certainly served an obstacle. But today, they are living proof of why you shouldn't give up. As the saying goes, the days are long, but the years are fast. Indeed they are. In June of 2007, I took a seat next to Vicki Yates as co-anchor of News Channel 5 at 6 o'clock. The transition couldn't have been smoother, thanks to Vicki, who welcomed me with support and encouragement. Sixteen years later, my colleague and friend is ready for a well-deserved retirement. I sat down with her recently to talk about how her TV journey started, what she'll miss the most, and what's next. Have you had any time to at least stop and reflect? Sometimes at, at night when I'm home, I'll think, wow, I'm going to be here. You know, I'm going to be watching somebody else do the news. But there's a part of me that just really is looking forward to it. I get signs that, yeah, this is when you're supposed to go. This is it. How did you know? How did you finally make the decision? I felt that I was ready to try different things. I love what I do. I love school patrol. I love anchoring. I love all of it. I love the people here. But there was something that said, you know what? There are other things you can do. There are things that I really want to do. I want to travel. I want to see my grandkids. There are just numerous things. Her two young granddaughters are no doubt looking forward to more time with their Gigi and vice versa. Having grandkids is like, it's the best. And I tell everybody, if you have grandkids, it doesn't get much better. Vicki grew up in Detroit and went to Michigan State University, where surprisingly, journalism was not her first career choice. It was advertising. You know, I've always wanted to write. That's what I wanted to do. I thought if I can get a job or a career where I can write uh, creatively or any other way, that's what I want to do. When advertising didn't click, journalism came calling. We had our own newscasts at, at school, and things just started clicking. I was given an internship at WJIM-TV. She dove into the news business despite a big emotional obstacle, a lack of self-confidence. I was a very insecure child in that I always thought everybody could do things better than I could. And major stage fright. She recalls the trauma of having to read a Bible passage in church on Easter Sunday when she was a young girl. And I just thought, I'm going to die if I have to sit in front of a crowd. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, no, this is it. This is my last day on earth because I'm going to mess this up. Really? She didn't mess it up. Instead, she overcame those insecurities through a long, award-winning broadcasting career with stops at TV stations in places like Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Then, in the spring of 1990, Nashville and News Channel 5. No, I, the longest I'd worked anywhere was five years in Pittsburgh. And so I thought, okay, I'll work here another five years and then I'll move on somewhere else. But five years turned into 10, 15, 20, and now 33 years. A remarkable run in a city that's seen a remarkable transformation. Think about then and you think about now, Nashville. Man. A different place. I tell people it's a completely different place. I mean, seriously, I even drive around now and I think, what used to be there? Because it's not there anymore. What is here is her heart. With a demanding career, Vicki raised three children on her own, all of whom are now successful adults. She humbly deflects praise, though, instead giving much credit to Nashville's family-friendly environment. You know, this is where I was supposed to be. I, I, I'll be honest, I, there was a lot of praying going on, you know, that I'm making the right moves, that my kids are doing fine, and it was just something that was important to me, was to be, to raise my kids in a great atmosphere. Where I live, people were very friendly, my kids went to a good school. She's always appreciated Nashville, and for more than 30 years, she's shown it, eagerly volunteering for community events and supporting nonprofits. 
this is our neighborhood. I mean, Nashville is our neighborhood, and you have to be involved. You can't just go home every night and just say, meh, you know what, I've done what I had to do. I did my eight hours at work, I'm going home. It's like an out-of-body experience. Well, say, is it me. strange for you? <laughs> it really is. Well, we've got more coming up Wednesday. We're going to have a little fun, talk about some other things. You're a great but, interviewer, though. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Bittersweet, bittersweet. Yeah. But uh, say, easy to interview uh, you. I don't know about that, but <laughs> stage fright, really? Oh yeah, oh yeah, big time. It's like if you were going to drop dead, reading the Bible to Read a bunch of people in church <laughs> is the way to do it. Like, <laughs> how do you not? Straight to heaven. Jesus is like, come on, girl. Come we're on, just going to take this uh, down. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a good month, but it's bittersweet. It is month. for me it too. Is a You're just going to have to sit back and let us, you know, bestow oh, you. Oh, I don't know. It's hard not to say stop. Don't do that. No, <laughs> we ain't stopping. No, we're not. Can't stop.